write in your notes on the top of the page, understanding the season of Jubilee. Understanding my season of Jubilee. The word Jubilee, write it down, is from the word jubilation, and it actually means to rejoice. Jubilee, the word, is also the same Hebrew word for release. Keep writing, release. Jubilee means to release. Thirdly, the word means freedom. To set someone free. To release a person into freedom. That's jubilee. This word jubilee is found in the Bible and was actually used by God in the context of a very unique experience. And you have to understand jubilee because jubilee belongs to you. Jubilee means freedom. Jubilee is introduced in the Old Testament because God set up a system for his people whereby every seven years of life on the seventh year God commanded the people to release whoever they held in their control whether they were slaves or servants Secondly, he commanded them to release the land, to stop farming for one year. God didn't explain much of this to us. He really didn't. But you know when God tells you something, it's right. And the people say, if God tells you something, don't wait for explanation. Just do it. I'm going to show you why. Jubilee is so important, even to us being sick today. So God commanded the people, let the land lie free on the seventh year. Even release the land, he says. And then he says, even release the beast that you have. Let them roam free for the year. I mean, strange instructions that makes no sense. He says, don't plant anything. Don't cultivate anything, just let the land grow. Then he says, if you owe anybody anything, release them. Boy, that sounds good. That's Jubilee. If someone owes you, it's the tough part. He says, release them. You know, this is great. I believe that if we obey this today, I'm talking about beginning today, right now, God will begin to change your life. He'll turn your situation around. There are people who owe you $50, you still hold that against them. Jubilee has arrived. Call them up and tell them that's okay. God's gonna begin to bless you. If someone owes you an apology, God says, release them it's jubilee if someone holds a grudge against you or you against them he says in jubilee release them that means make up <laughs> it's bahamian talk reconcile with people why this jubilee I have nothing against you and I hold nothing against you. You owe me nothing, I release you. That's Jubilee. But the question is, if Jubilee was given to the nation of Israel, then how can you claim it as a Gentile believer? We gotta start here. Because you cannot claim something if it isn't yours, remember? You can't tell somebody this is yours when it ain't yours. So if it's, if it's not yours, you can't claim it. 
So first we have to see if we qualify to claim Jubilee. God told Israel, Jubilee belongs to you. So in order to, to be in Jubilee, you've got to have faith and the conviction that you are a Jubilee candidate. Who are the Israelites? Good question. The Israelites are the people who were called the Hebrews. The Hebrews are the people who are descendants and the children of Abraham. Where do we get the word Israel or Israelite from? It came from the tribe that God chose to name all the other clans synonymously with. There were 12 tribes, but we know that there was a son, a, even yea, a grandson of Abraham. Abraham was called of God from the land of Ur, where they worshipped idols and the moon, and God says, Abraham, out of you I will create what? A nation. And that nation shall do what? Bless the nations. So whatever I'm going to do to you, Abraham, is going to come off on all the nations. God then told Abraham, here's how the nation will be created. I'm going to give you a son. And from that son shall come the seed of nations. And that nation that comes from your son shall bless the nation. So Abraham had a miraculous boy, his wife, and he had a child at 100 years old. The name of the child was Isaac. Isaac became the seed for the nation of Israel. Isaac then had two sons, and their names were Jacob and Esau. God spoke to Jacob. Esau was the eldest Jacob was the youngest, uh, Esau was after his stomach, Jacob went after his dreams. That's the difference between success and failure. If you go after your stomach, you will fail. Stomach means immediate gratification. If you want to succeed in life, don't try to have overnight success. Jacob had a long-range view of life. The eldest son was supposed to get the birthright. As a matter of fact, Esau was supposed to be the father of many nations. Jacob ended up being the prince of God through whom Christ came. It was supposed to be Esau. But you can actually forfeit your future if you want your present to be your future. You remember the story about these two sons, don't you? Esau was hungry. And Jacob came and talked to him and he said, Jacob, if you cook me some food and feed me, I'll give you my right as being the firstborn. What a terrible exchange. For a pot of food, I'm going to give you my inheritance. That doesn't sound surprising. Many of us have great vision from God, but yet we sell it for a relationship. An immediate sexual act. We do it often, don't we? I mean, imagine, you know, I tell the young people often, and, and I, I, I talk to my son and daughter, and I said, look, don't let anything sabotage your future. One night of pleasure could destroy a future of heritage. And Esau did that. He sold his future for a bowl of mutton soup. That's what his brother cooked for him. And his brother bought the mutton. It might have been curried goat, curried sheep, something. Because he was a shepherd. And he bought this bowl of soup and gave it to the guy and the guy put his hand under his thigh, where your thigh, they always put the hand under the thigh to swear because that's where your loin is and your loin is where the 
future generations are, where your sperm is. And he swore that his birthright to the future of his father's kingdom will go to this boy for a bowl of soup. He lost it. Jacob <laughs> was known as the deceiver. Matter of fact, the word Jacob means slickster. <laughs> a deceiver, a slickster. You know, we, we call it in the Bahamas, you're slick. Don't name your son Jacob. A dangerous name. It actually means deceiver. Every time you call him, you say, deceiver, come eat. You don't want to do that. Now, deceiver had to run because, you remember, he also fooled his father to, in order to get the bird right. He took the soup and his daddy was dying and gave it, you know, put the, 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 the hair on his arm from a, 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 an animal and his father thought it was Esau and he gave this bird right to Jacob. And that's why he became really a fulfillment of his name, the deceiver. Now, I think about this. Jacob ran after that. God met Jacob and said, Jacob, the promise I made to your grandfather, Abraham, is going to continue through you. We're going to have nations come out of you. God said, but the first thing I want to do is change your name. I don't like your name. So God changed Jacob's name from Jacob, deceiver, to Israel. That's where the name comes from. God changed this wicked boy's name from Jacob, deceiver, to Israel. Write the word Israel down, please. The word Israel has a meaning. It means prince with God. Not prince of God. Prince with God. Because you see, there is a prince of God <laughs> that's coming through the prince with God. It's written very carefully in the Bible that Israel does not mean prince of God because Israel is not God's prince. There's only one prince of peace. But the name Israel, prince with God, means that God has chosen you, Jacob, to be first with him. That means Esau must be second. Esau was supposed to be prince. The first child of a king line is prince. This man, Jacob, became God's choice. And God proved it by the name. Guess how many sons Jacob, whose name has changed to Israel, had? He was a busy guy. He had 12 children. That's the only sons they're talking about. We don't know how many daughters the brother had. He had a big clan. The 12 sons he had were known as the sons of Israel. Each one of those sons had children and they were called tribes or, you know, a group, a clan. So there were 12 tribes who belonged to Israel. Got the meaning? So the 12 tribes of Israel are the 12 children of Jacob who also had children and they became tribes in the nation of Israel. Israel then took on the fatherhood image of those 12 tribes. So Israel, we refer to Israel really as the, the father of the tribes of Israel. Today, there's a country named Israel. Why is it named Israel? Because the sons of Jacob are still alive today. They tried to kill the sons of Israel many times in history. You know that. Hitler had a program laid out to destroy them completely. He wanted to kill every Jew on earth. That was Hitler's plan. We know that uh, he killed about six million or more uh, in Europe alone. But you can't kill what God gave life to. Today there are still 
12 tribes and they live in that land called Israel and Israel was reborn 53 years ago. Very important thing. Now, Israel therefore is the son of Abraham. So an Israel, an Israeli is a Hebrew and a Hebrew is now called a Jew which is from the word Judah or Judah which became the line through Israel Jacob one of the tribes was called Judah it was through Judah God chose from the twelve Judah everybody say Judah say Judah write that word down another word to remember Israel means what Prince with God Judah God chose from the twelve and he says through you I'm gonna to continue to bless the nations through you I'm going to create a nation that shall bring forth a blessing to who the nations remember the point is to bless the nations Judah means here's the meaning it means praise Wow let's go back to some names pick God's mind up God called the first choice Abraham his name was what Abram God said I don't like your name Abram means barren because I'm calling you Abraham <laughs> Abraham means father of many then he took Jacob changed his name to what Israel Israel means what Prince with God then he chose Judah Judah means what praise boy God's getting everything mixed up here now he's getting the church together I'm gonna have a people who will father many and they will be princes with me and they shall praise me Judah then becomes the tribe through which God promised he will bring the Messiah who's the Messiah the Messiah is that seed that God promised to Abraham so actually the seed is in all of these seeds coming through history and Judah becomes one of those containers of the seed the Bible prophesies to Judah and God says Judah from you shall come a lion and he shall roar and he will set the people free everybody say Jubilee so we sing a song don't we in church history It's called the Lion of Judah now this is where some of the religions like the Rastafarian religions get off on to the lion bit okay because they began to they began to claim that Judah is is the line through which Solomon got his connection through which Haley Selassie got his connection and that Haley is the lion now let's deal with this keep the camera on if Haley is the lion then he's supposed to set everybody free now I argue in your religion brother but if Haley is the lion we need to hear him roar this is not criticism let's look at this honestly here When I went to Africa, the Africans don't even know who Haley is. I've been in Africa more than all of you, most of you sitting there watching this TV. So putting on your hairpiece and letting your hair grow, you ain't been to Africa to ask them about Haley. When I went there, I talked about Haley Selassie, they said, who that? They said, oh, you mean that guy who's ruling Ethiopia? Yeah, he dead, I know. The Bible says this lion shall rise from the dead. You know, there are all kinds of cats in the world. But we're looking for a lion. Can I hear an amen in the church? Amen. Through you shall come the lion of Judah. Out of Judah shall come a scepter wow 
prophecy. You remember when we read the Christmas story? That prophecy is in the Christmas story. It says that the angels sang and then the kings came. It says, and this was to fulfill the prophecy which says that out of Judah shall come a scepter. Scepter means rulership. King. This is where we get our foundation for the church. So the children of Israel are sons of Abraham. Let us read Galatians and see if what God promised Israel, that seed of Abraham is also to be claimed by you. Tell your neighbor, let me check. Come on, repeat after me, let me check and see if I am in the contract. <laughs> Chapter 3 of Galatians verse 20. 26. You are all sons of God. And the people say, I can't hear you. Are you a son of God? Lift your hand up high. Say, I'm born again. I gave my life to Jesus. Holy Spirit lives in me. And all who has the Spirit of God are sons of God. I'm a son of God. Okay, everybody agree on that? Say, now I'm a son of God. That's important to know that now and believe that because that's the first step to Jubilee. If you know you're born again. Now, if you ain't born again this morning, you better get in now. But if you're born again, you are about to get set up for a blessing. I didn't say you're going to get blessed now. You can get set up for one. Read the next statement. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free. Male, nor female. Glory, hallelujah. Let me pause there a minute. See, the men ain't going to get blessed more than the women in this thing. And the women ain't going to get blessed more than the men. God ain't going to carry a favor because she's a woman, brother. If she getting blessed and you ain't getting blessed, there's something you ain't doing. There's no male, nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Look at the next verse. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and every promise God made to Abraham is yours. Come on, shout one time for me. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Praise God. Lift your two hands here. Come on. I want the devil to hear you. Say, Lord, I am your son. And every promise you made to Abraham and his seed are mine. And I claim them right now. Jubilee is one of the promises. Let's turn to the book of Leviticus. Let's read the blessing of Jubilee on the children of Abraham. Everybody clear? We qualify, don't we? I say we qualify, don't we? God did a miracle to get us in the contract through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why Paul says when God spoke to Abraham, he was talking about Christ. That means whoever is in Christ is in the promise. Write this statement down. I can only have faith for what I believe. Yes, Lord. 
hear me. I have a picture in my spirit about, and I'm afraid that some of you might slip into this, so don't let this happen to you. Do you remember the story in the Old Testament about the two lepers who were sitting outside the wall of the city? They <laughs> were hungry, starving, naked and thirsty and they had their backs against the wall outside sitting down leaning up on the back of the city inside the city was so much wealth the bible says that it was a plunder the spoils were everywhere the two lepers were talking to each other listen the worst thing to do sometimes is to talk to people who ain't got nothing also. <laughs> That's bad company. <laughs> you ain't got nothing, I ain't got nothing. What we can talk about? Nothing. <laughs> so they sitting out there, Janet, talking to one another. Both of them, what are they talking about? My stomach hurting, yours hurting too, mine. We talking about gas. <laughs> And the Bible says behind the wall was food piled up. Diamonds and gold and shekels of silver. And they outside talking to each other. I believe there are going to be people this year talking to each other and missing the Jubilee. This program was sponsored by TVN and was made possible by your love gifts and telephone pledges. It can remain on the air only with your continued support. So write my